Welcome to Pet Tech, the podcast show about new technologies to help us care for our pets. I am your host, host, Ken Jones. Jones. Welcome to the show that helps you apply today's technology to make the care of your pets easier, safer, and more fun. I am the Pet Tech Guy, and this is the program where we talk about electronic tracking devices, high-tech nutrition, aquarium gear, filter systems, heating, lighting, computer controls, and much, much more. Technology is the application of science. On Pet Tech, we explore the science behind pet products and services. We also bring you the new and wonderful in the world of pets. If you have a suggestion for a topic or product to discuss on the show, email me at pettech at petliferadio.com. That's pettech, P-E-T-T-E-C-H, at petliferadio, P-E-T-L-I-F-E-R-A-D-I-O.com. I would love to hear from you. And just to make our show even more fun, I award prizes and discounts on pet products. You can win! Visit the show notes page of each episode and listen at the end of the show for instructions on how to claim your discounts and prizes. I love winter. I was born in winter. And that was so perfect because winter is the time to stay in the house, close to loved ones and snuggle. Inside in winter, the house is warm from a roaring fire that makes noise and gives heat and a rosy glow to everything. At this time of year, The kitchen smells so good from baking and spices and dog treats fresh from the oven. I get extra food in the winter so that I can be fatter for our walks outside. And you know how much I love eating. Sometimes in winter, a tree is brought into the living room. Everyone makes a big deal about this tree, usually a scotch pine. But if I go near it, then everybody gets really Hello and welcome to Pet Tech. Today we have a guest named Debbie Weldon, who produces a CD called Soothing Stories and Music for the Solo Dog. And I'd like you to meet Debbie now. Say hello, Debbie. (laughs) Hi. Hi. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you on the show, and I appreciate you taking the time to, to tell us about this very special project of yours. I must say, when I first came across it, I, 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 I didn't give it much of a thought, but having listened to it, uh, I'm very impressed with the quality of this. This is obviously a, a project of of great passion for you. How did you come yeah. about doing this? How did you get the idea to create this uh, this uh, uh, this CD? And and tell us uh, tell us what it's about. What would you do it for? Sure. Well, I will. I have one dog, and actually, about eighty five percent of people that own a dog have one dog. And I, I freelance, I work in the film business as a costumer, and the hours are very long. My days are like 14 to 17 hours a day when Whoa. I do work. So, of course, I have dog sitters that come in and, and feed the dog and take the dog out. Mm-hmm. But I wanted the dog to have something special that would be his that he could listen to that would keep him entertained and would keep his mind active. And a girlfriend of mine told me that when she goes to work, she puts on a French radio station for her dog, who are French poodles. And I said, well, that's very nice, but I want to go farther. I want to write stories where dogs understand the words. Because, of course, it, you can put on the radio for for dog, and, which is better, actually, than the television, because, like, cats like to watch things move back and forth. But a lot of dogs, they're more into listening after they're, after smell. Hearing is a very important sense to them, so they do, you know, really hear things. So that's why I did it as a as a CD and not as a DVD. Mm -hmm. So I wrote stories. I wrote 12 original stories using over 300 words that dogs will understand. And, for example, I have, like, Alphabet of Dog Breeds, which lists almost all of the dog breeds. (laughs) And exercise is fun, talks about the sports that they do. I love naps, obviously talks about where they sleep all different topics where they will understand words. And then I hire professional voice actors, and I licensed classical music that is very soothing so that it really wouldn't wake them up. And we rehearsed, uh, and we recorded it, 
and it certainly was a labor of love, and it really helps with dogs who have separation anxiety so that when, when the people leave the house, they can put the CD on replay, and it could just keep going all day. And each track has a different person speaking. There are five women and three men, on the CD, oh. so the dog doesn't get bored, you know, and they, you know, after they've heard the 12 of them, they may not remember the first one, and so it just sort yeah. of starts again. Or if a dog is in the car, and if a dog really is nervous in a car, then the owner could play it in, in the car. Also, if they have children, they can play it so that the kids can learn more about the habits of dogs. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I wanted to mention that... Uh... That this would be a great CD for young children as well, because uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, I thought uh, I thought you must be channeling canines to to, to write this, because you you write it so well from a from a puppy's point of view, and it's 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 well, it's uh, similar to some of the best Disney uh, movies that way. I I just thought it was a a wonderful script, and and you're right, the actors put put a lot of variety and a lot of expression into this. They did an excellent job. Thank you. Well, it was, I've never been a director before, and it's something that really didn't come very naturally. Um, but the thing was is that when I did this, my puppy, Charlie O'Shea, was a puppy, and I was home for the first year with him. I decided to do that. And so we would rehearse at my house. And if things got, I thought, if they got a little too serious, I would say to people, just go in that kitchen and look at Charlie. Look at how he's happy about everything. Look at how he's just jumping around all the time and everything is fabulous. And that's what you are, your puppies. Your puppies. <laughs> so Charlie Charlie was uh, was an acting coach in part from this project. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was, was more of an inspiration. I see. <laughs> um, because he was, you know, he was a puppy. And all puppies are like the best things in the world. And, of course, they, they grow up. They get older, but they really don't grow up. You know, <laughs> that, that's us, true. That's true. They're well, puppy. I, I interrupted you when you were describing the various chapters. Uh, you, you, you cover a lot of, of doggy topics. Uh, I'll, I'll let me let you uh, continue with that. Sure. No, I do. And that's what's different about this and other dog CDs, because there are CDs for dogs with music, but not with stories not with words over the music that the dog understands. And so that's what makes this different. So I did it as a concept album because I like what the Beatles did with their concept albums. <laughs> so I start when the, when the puppy is born, and then we go on to my favorite foods, which because food is really important, and then my people friends, all the, all the different people, the gardener and the veterinarian and the, the mailman and all the different people that a dog will meet. My favorite seasons, all about what happens in the weather. I love my house, all about the rooms. Because if I say to Charlie, my dog, go to the kitchen, he goes to the kitchen. I mean, he knows what the word kitchen means. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, a Walk in the Park talks about things that are outside. Tales at the Fire Hydrant was a lot of fun to write because that was a, <laughs> That's a, great that name was a too. play. That was a play about a first obedience class. And I, everyone in it, all the voice actors are in it. And, for example, for a French poodle, I have someone who is from France. And for a Portuguese water dog, the woman was from Portugal. So I was very specific, and actually the Yorkshire Terrier, the woman, is from Yorkshire. <laughs> so I, I was wow. very specific, and uh, it was hard work to record. We did it in, in two days, eight or days. It was a lot of work, uh, and that was fun to write. Favorite Toys is one minute long, and I rhymed the toys that dogs play with. And I contacted the Kong company because Kong is a hard toy and it's a registered trademark. And I told them about my CD, and they were very pleased about it. And they said, absolutely, I could I could use their name, Kong. Uh, and then we go to Exercise Fun, which talks about fly ball and swimming and agility and best in show and all the kind of sports that it will do. A Day at the Beach is a beautiful piece. It's there. It's, they're all very slow, but this is very slow and talks about the waves going in and out. And then the alphabet of dog breeds, as I mentioned, lists all the breeds of dogs. And then, of course, we end with I Love Naps, which is 
so slow that I guarantee anybody to stay awake for it. Really... <laughs> I love naps. When it comes to naps, I am not an amateur. I am a professional. Please call me Dr. Dog because I have my PhD in sleepology, the art of sleeping. What I don't know about relaxation doesn't need to be known. I can meditate, contemplate, zone out, turn off, chill, doze, catch 40 winks, nod, hibernate, repose, rest, have a sleep. Put your eye out. Well, uh, you, you certainly have d you've just done a terrific job. This is really uh, uh, a lot of professional effort. You've got professional actors in this. You've got these wonder wonderful little stories. And gosh darn, with the music, too. I mean, you got Bach and, and, and Beethoven and, and I do. Uh, Chopin. I do. And, I mean, your backup I, band is amazing. <laughs> well, I tell you, the, the gentleman that did the music recording and editing did the X-Men file films. And they were very concerned about editing Beethoven and everything. Because obviously this music is, everyone knows it. And I picked pieces that would really fit the music. And then we edited the word and the, the pacing of it into the music so that it, it all fits together. And, and this was professionally recorded. And, and you, you told me in the same studio that the X-Men films were, were done in. Is yes, that, is that, that, right? that is correct. There's a little and piece of I tech was, for the show. <laughs> yes, and what I was very proud of is that last year, 2011, it was chosen to be in the gift bags at the Academy Awards. And so my CDs were given out to uh, winners at the Academy Awards last year. Because the American Humane Society was one of the sponsors. My goodness. And so I had I contacted them and they were they were very, very happy to do this. So I will think of it as the Academy Awards happened this year. And then people can go to my website and and they can listen to pieces of all of the stories. It's a and very, that's how they can buy the C D. It's a very nice website, very well done also. Yeah, Thank you. Well, I, it's, I urge all our listeners to check it out at the website. And that website, Debbie, is? That website is dogstoriesandmusic.com. So it's triple W D O G S T O R I E S A N D M U S I C dot com. Very good, yes. Well, that's. Dog uh, story, yes. What, what did you, um, did you, what kind of research did you do to, to, um, before you, you started recording. I mean, you got a great team together to do this and everything. It's quite an effort. It was quite a commitment to make. Um, what I, And I know Charlie was the inspiration, but... Uh, Charlie was I, the inspiration <laughs> But you, 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 you knew this would be useful to a lot of dog owners. And I'm just wondering what yes. you found out about that. Well, I have sold... I've sold over a thousand of them. And... I have sold them to many different owners. I have sold them to owners who have more than one dog, certainly, because there are many people that do. I have sold them, to, obviously, to dog owners who work. I have sold them to dog owners who are deaf, who have actually bought this, and they can hear the vibrations through the floor. And, they, and I have sold it to owners where their dog is deaf. I have sold it to people who have primates, who had monkeys, because monkeys are a very active animal, mm -hmm. and they like to be busy. I have sold it to some owners that have cats, although it is not written for cats. Um, and I have sold it to two owners where they have an animal that is, that is ill or elderly and is passing away, mm -hmm. so that the animal will have company. Yeah, that's so, that's a nice that's a nice idea. That's a very nice idea. Well, the yeah, pal. The pal oh, oh, I was just going to say the palette of this recording, I mean, between the voices, which are, are just so well done, so much um, feeling is put into it. And then, of course, the beautiful music, and it's, it's, it's a quality recording. There's, it's just a, a wonderful palette for, for any, any creature or anybody to listen to. Thank uh, you. Well, I think it's a good uh, birthday present for a dog. It's a good house present if you're going to visit someone. Oh, it's yeah, that, what know, a great present that it would has make. a dog. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, if you're bringing, uh, if you're going to dinner at someone's and you're bringing them flowers or or wine or candy, you know, you could you could bring this for their pet. So it has a lot of applications as as a gift, but it it was made to be useful. And I gave away, uh, I've given away a lot of them to animal shelters, especially during Hurricane Katrina. Mm. And it's difficult in a shelter because there is a lot of barking and a lot of noise. Mm, But we know that dogs can be tense in a shelter. Sure. So that's, you know, it, it, it hopefully can be helpful to them. I've also given it away to people who work and like let's, this woman had a business meeting so she left her West Highland Terrier in her office listening to the dog CD and she said when she came back he didn't even get up <laughs> was listening to the CD. Pull off my paws but the sun on my back feels so good my muscles get relaxed and ready to play at the same time. When I see kids at the beach playing volleyball, I yearn to get into the game. My mommy brings a ball to the beach for me to catch, and I spend a lot of time fetching it. I notice at the beach that when I run to my mommy, other people scream. Don't kick sand in my face! And they cover themselves with a towel. But I don't know what's bothering them. I'm just running, running, running. The sand is magical, because on top it can be really hot. And when I dig a hole, I can find wet sand. I love the way it sticks to my nose and my fur. But it doesn't <laughs> taste so good. Well, now, Debbie, how, how are these available? How can people, how much, what do they sell for, and how can people get them? They sell for fourteen ninety nine Canadian plus tax and handling. I'm, I'm both. I'm originally from Los Angeles, but I do live in Canada. Mm. And all one has to do is go to the website, dogstoriesandmusic.com, and go to buy this CD, and they can buy it with PayPal. Uh-huh. And uh, there's some shipping and handling. But I wanted to keep it, you know, like right under that $15 mark. Um, well, that's... And then I send it myself. That's great. Well, that's that's very affordable, and that's uh, I, I, it seems to be anybody with pets ought to have have this available to them because there's certainly times when you'd you'd want to use something like this to to calm down the pooch or to keep them uh, keep them company if you're going to be away for a long time. I'm certainly yeah. I, I just well, got I, hold of my copy this morning, but I'm going to be uh, giving it uh, giving my dog a treat with it here pretty soon. I, I'm real curious I to see how will. it does. <laughs> I, I bet you will. It, it is a lot of fun. I, I try to inject a lot of fur into it because it's not, of course, only the dogs that listen to it. The people couldn't be home. And so if they're home, it has to be fun for the people. Oh, and, and whenever I it'd be do great. it, show, it'd be great. the people like it. It'd be great for children. Children would love this thing. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it, it's so well done. I just have to recommend it to people. Um, it's, it's, Thank this you. Kind, this kind of product could be casually done. And it can it could be a joke, but this is no joke. This is a real quality product, and and it's uh, very nicely done. Uh, you have good reason to be proud of it, and and uh, you know you're going to have to come out with volume two. Well, I don't have <laughs> to think of more stories. Yeah. I'll just have to think I, of I more stories. I bet story. you will, though. You're obviously a very creative type. I want to thank you, Debbie, for being on our show and telling us about your soothing stories and music for the solo dog. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. Pet Tech will be right back after these messages. Hey, if you like what I'm doing here at Pet Tech, I invite you to buy me a grande cup of coffee. Your support will help me grow the show. In return, I will read on the air during an upcoming episode a call out, a short message from you to promote any pet club or group animal protection group or environmental cause you like. Just send your message with a check for $10 to Ken Jones, P.O. Box 61, Murphy's, California, 95247. That's P.O. Box 61, Murphy's, M-U-R-P-H-Y-S, California, 95247. That grande coffee is sure going to keep me going. Thanks. Hi. 
this is Ken Jones from the Prince of Ponds podcast. The frogs are shaking the shakers, the turtles are hitting the slapsticks, and the koi are blowing the trumpets. It's party time here at Prince of Ponds. Out under the swaying palm trees, the pond fairies are kicking up their heels and spinning in delight in the twilight. Here on Pet Life Radio, it's time to celebrate the magic of ponds, waterfalls, fountains, and water gardens at the Prince of Ponds podcast. Tech is back, so now on with the show. Welcome to Pet Tech, and I want to welcome our guest today. We have a, a very, I'm very excited about this interview because it's uh, it's a, just a, a very clever invention that our, our guest has created here, and her name is Rhonda Dutton. Say hello, Rhonda. Hello. Rhonda is the CEO of Sterling Design, Inc., and she's the inventor and designer and manufacturer of the Avian AquaClean. And the Avian AquaClean is, um, well, it's, it's, it's very clever. It's, uh, it's a wonderful product. And uh, I, um, when I first heard about it, I, I, I thought, no, you got to be kidding. <laughs> but, 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 but Rhonda... Uh, t- tell us about this Avian AquaClean. What the heck does it do? Okay. Well, the Avian AquaClean is a great little water system, and it's designed to work beneath your bird's cage. And it's a very simple, um, very simple mechanics to the system. And it's it's my my mother. It was so simple. My mother, my 85 year old mother, used this for uh, three years. But um, you can keep your birds healthy and happy in one of the most natural environments. And there's just so many advantages to this system, and it's going to surpass the dry methods of the past. I really believe it's, it's economical, it's ecological, because you, you, the premise is instead of bird newspaper beneath your birdcage, we, we have a solid surface of water that constantly moves beneath the bird grid, the birdcage grid. And this water tends to trap and hold all the dander and feathers and dust rather than letting it go airborne or have a hot bed of bacteria beneath your birdcage. Well, that dry methods have been in the past. Right. Now, anybody who's kept birds, and I've kept a lot of birds over the years, knows that, I mean, the least pleasant thing about it is that the cages are messy. And, and, and then it, when you go to clean the cage, you got all these newspapers and all these feathers and this dust, this dander that, that gets up in the air. And, and, of course, when the birds flap their wings, they, they throw that stuff around the room. And, you know, if, exactly. it weren't, if it weren't for the mess, birds would be wonderful. I love birds, but, boy, keeping a bird in the house uh, can be a messy thing. And cleaning the cage is most unpleasant. And, and as you mentioned, you know, you wonder about what you're breathing. And, and this, exactly. this invention of yours just gets rid of all that. That's amazing. That's wonderful. It really manages it because, like you say, the, the surface the surface water, it's only an eighth of an inch of water. It's in a black water tray, so you don't see the water. The water all moves off the tray through a system that you that you can't, you can't see the water, but it does the work. And it's a closed system, so it keeps all the um, – it moves all the waste off into a into a basket that's out of sight so you can simply clean your bird cage touch it up and squeegee the water tray out of sight and your your system looks great and then you can empty the waste at your convenience so depending on how often you wanted to empty your basket you could empty it every you know a couple days you don't have to empty your basket every day you can get by with every couple days and um that gives you so much allowance to have a nice looking bird cage without living in a bird cage yourself. <laughs> you can have the bird by you, you could have them in your office, you could have them near your kitchen and not have this dander, dust and fallout that's so common with bird cages. Um, it gives off humidity, the water uh, gives off a humidity and um, a, a tranquil sound. It's, total feng shui because you have really you have like a little water fountain moving a little so, moving water feature you know it just occurred to me you you you, you just said it uh, 
this is this is more than just a, a terrific way to keep a birdcage clean, but it's actually a water feature. Perhaps I should have you on my other podcast, Prince of Ponds. We talk about water features there. Well, we use a <laughs> modified tent air pond filter in our system. And you have this so, you have this shallow constant flow, this shallow river of water just flowing quietly underneath the bird cage and right. it captures all the stuff that falls off your birds. Right. That's and that, it puts it all into one convenient place. Right. So out of sight. This is out all of sight. all self-contained. It's in, in a, a, a wheeled cart that you can wheel around if you want to, but it's all right. self-contained, and it um, it it just it, it's such a tidy idea. It's such it's such a great idea, I think. Well, when I developed this, it was mostly it was designed for the waste. It's a waste. It's a closed system, water waste pod, you know, system. But the the advantage is once I once I invented this and started using it was the the way it controlled the dust and the allergen. And the humidity that it gave off, which is nice for your home because we use forced air as well as, well as air conditioning, which are both um, drying elements. And the humidity when you run a system in your house is just very pleasant. You have a nice constant humidity, and then you also have the, the nice sound and um, the convenience. And you don't have to fill up your garbage can. Say you have... A bird cage, and you want to change the, you know, they say you change, should change your paper every day. I don't know anyone that changes the bird cage paper every day. I mean, <laughs> I, it may be every other day, but you get such a buildup right. of garbage. So you have the soiled waste, the soiled newspaper, you have the airborne when you pick up the paper, all that goes up in your face and your birds, which is, you know, very hazardous. And you also, you continually have. In the dry methods of the past with newspaper, you have a hotbed of bacteria sitting just inches below your bird. Yeah. You know, that when yeah. he wing flaps, it goes airborne. So with the water, it's, it's contained. Once it hits the water, they can wing flap. You can open the door, open your window. The furnace can kick on. Everything can, you know, nothing disturbs that, that um, embodiment, the water, that does all the work for you. Right. And you know how bad bird poop turns to concrete well <laughs> you can simply wet sponge your cage down right in place over the water every day i mean you can touch up your perches give them fresh food and water squeegee your tray your cage looks terrific and you're ahead of the game now, know, Rhonda, Rhonda, to... let, let's go back to uh, uh, to, uh, to that the issue of uh, humidity for a moment because um okay. i think that's something most people don't think much about but I, mm -hmm. I know for a fact uh, uh, that uh, humidity, most of the birds we keep are, are tropical birds, and, and they really need more humidity than they get, as you pointed out, in the average home. that is not sure. a humid place at all. It tends to be very dry. And um, with this water action uh, underneath the uh, bottom of the cage there is uh, putting humidity right there where the bird is, right where they need it. I, I, I know for a fact that uh, veterinarians, uh, especially avian uh, specialists in, in veterinary medicine, have told me that they they believe the average uh, captive bird, oh. pet bird, is is it needs to be bathed far more often than they get get to. Sure. That they that, that their feather thing. their feathers for good feather health they require yeah. uh, more humidity than what they can get in in captivity. What about the size now? Is this uh, does it, is it designed so the cage just fits right on it? Is there a chance for for stuff to fly out uh, onto the floor, or or or, it, or is this larger so that it actually captures stuff outside the cage too? The ideal of the basic, the grid fits across the entire top surface, which is 22 wide by 20 inches deep. So you can take your average small wire bird cage, even I you can go up to it. You could go up to a 20 by 20, which would not give you much fallout on both sides. But if you put their seed cup as low as you can, they don't flip the seed out. I see. So it, it tends to stay cleaner. But anything 18 by 18, that gives you a good two inches of, of around the cage mm -hmm. for, for, for fallout. So they can be out of their cage or in their cage, and everything will still fall in the water. That's the ideal situation uh, the, so, um, so what we're saying is we, a perimeter. we have this one model that uh, accommodates a cage that's uh, 20 by 22 or smaller, and smaller is better. Smaller. Is that is that right? Right. 
Ah, right. Okay. So all the small little wire bird cages, you've seen them, everything. Preview Hendrix has almost so many cage companies. The majority of their cages, you simply take off the bottom plastic tray and newspaper drawer, and you put the cage wall down to the grid on the basic model, and you're good to go. Now, if you wanted to buy a new cage, that's your requirement. It needs to be within 22 by 20. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you simply clip it down. We provide the clips, and you put your bird cage on the, the basic system, and the grid is your new floor of now, your bird cage. So you're... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering how, how tall is this um, this unit? Well, this is a the, the cart stands off the floor approximately thirty inches. Oh, I see. And and you put whatever size birdcage you want on top of that grid. Mm -hmm. So right. it is a cart, a wheeled cart. Mm -hmm. It's about thirty inches tall, so you don't need to put it on a table. You don't yeah. provide. It's really a that's a, a good base. height. A good height. It's a yeah. cage base. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. cage base. And um, you could even go with the even a round cage. You could put an, an 18 inch round, tall finch cage. You could put that, clip that down on this, and it would still look it would look good because the base is heavy, you know. And then your your lighter it kind of tiered down, you know, kind of mm -hmm, like a mm -hmm. would tear down visually. Um, well, it, on our website, we show a couple of cases. Yeah, I was, I was just about to say, uh, our visitors, our listeners are going to be visiting your website um, to take a look yeah. because it's a, it's an attractive unit. It's really quite simple and very attractive and very practical, and I, I think the height is a good height. Um, yeah. But, you know, the one thing we haven't talked about yet, which was one of the first things to come to my mind, is, boy, if, if you're creating a river underneath the cage and it's catching all the poop and seeds and stuff, isn't that going to smell? How do you keep, now listen, here we get into a little tech for Pet Tech. How did you, how did you, how did you figure this out now? How do you figure out how to keep the water from, from getting smelly? I did many years, many prototypes, many years of research, and we've done everything. And the whole, the whole prize to this system is um, I wanted to keep it simple. This is a very simple gravity fed, a pump delivers the, the, the water into the water tray and it runs through a, a very basic system of mechanical filters which is a strainer basket and then you have a removable filter pad which catches your bigger particulate and then inside your reservoir we use a it's a pond filter which houses charcoal strips now the charcoal strips are what the water in the reservoir is drawn through that pond filter and delivered up into the water tray so it takes the odor out of the water. Now so, you have so, small birds. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to say. So this water is not. Um, it's not just recirculating, but you're, you're filtering oh, no, it. You're filtered. filtering it's it through filtered. a couple different, uh, both a particulate right. uh, filter and then the carbon filter. And what does the carbon do for the for the water? For those that don't don't know, the charcoal and the it is the charcoal impregnated filter strip. And you wrap that around the foam filter inside the uh, reservoir. And this pond filter, when you do need to clean this, they need to be serviced probably depending on your birds and, and how often you do your uh, filters. But you can probably go up to six, six to seven weeks before Whoa. you need to drain it and clean. And All right, I'm sold. I'm filter. sold already. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to mess. Cool. This is a wastewater product. The water recirculates. If you do have any odor, say you notice a little odor at like week five or six, you can simply put a cap full of bleach in there and let and it will neutralize and knock that smell down, mm -hmm. and then that will give yeah. you time it, to it would get in and change. It. There's also a quick-release valve on the back so you can pop your, uh, take the tubing off, put it in a bucket, and pump it out. So you could do a quick water change. Say you're having people over and it's like oh i think that system's starting to smell you can you can pump out you know three quarters of your water into a bucket flush it down the toilet and add a fresh gallon you know a mm -hmm. fresh bucket mm -hmm. of water yeah and you'd be good to go for another couple of days so that so carbon uh, between those water changes that you would do almost every maybe couple of months uh, between those on a day-to-day -day basis it's the carbon that controls uh, that keeps the water sure. clean and, mm -hmm. and 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 sweet smelling
Well, Rhonda, let, let's get back to the, the price of this unit. We're on the verge of saying that, I think. As I recall, it, it's you, you were saying that it's available as a basic unit, which is basically the tray without the cage, or you can buy right. one with a cage. You can provide it either way, but a lot of people are already going to have their cage, and if it's if it's of the right size, which most is kind of a standard size for these kinds of birds, then you just need the basic unit. And as I recall, that was was that three ninety nine plus three. Three ninety nine for a unit. Right, three ninety nine yeah. is for the the basic model, and then we go up to four ninety nine for a system with a cage. With the cage, and these also come in an assortment of colors, which you have those uh, choices on your website. A very nice website, by the way. It's very clean and easy to read. Simple, very nice, very attractive, and people can go there. And wait, why don't you tell them your website address? Okay, it's uh, www.avian aqua clean that's a v i a n a q u a c l e a n dot com very good and all the information is there all the the, the uh, dimensions the the colors the different styles uh, the different styles of cages that you can provide or again they can buy the unit separately from the cage for for a cage they already sure. have now I've got a, a hint that you've got a special offer for our listeners. Would you like to tell us about I it? I do. You know, I'll discount that down to, you know, three hundred dollars. That's free shipping in the U.S. Wow. We'll do a three hundred for a basic. Now that's a bird stand for any bird cage you want to put on there. Well, that's that's a, that's a very wire bird that's cage. a generous deal, Rhonda. I, I, I thank you for that. I. I think we appreciate that. That's a big offer. That's a hundred dollars off of a of a three ninety nine product. That's that's twenty five percent discount. If you're a listener of Pet Tech, you just tell them when you place that order that your you, Pet Tech sent you, and that's going to save you a hundred dollars on one of these. And that that's a deal too good to pass up. If you've been living with a bird and you've got a few more years to go, uh, you know, and and you're dealing with those kinds of messy cages, I don't know. It just seems to me this would be. Uh, this would be your your best option, so it's something to it's something to check out and 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 to try out. So, I, I appreciate that special offer there, Rhonda, and well, and thanks, uh, I I really like having you on the show. I, you've got a nice, attractive, professional looking product, and I hope a lot of bird owners will give it a shot. So, thanks again for being on the show. Is there is there anything else you think we might have missed? Um, what about your phone number? Uh, do you want to share the, uh, the the phone number with us sure. uh, for people sure. who want to give you a call? It's on, the, it's on the site, and they can call me at 847-912-1395. Terrific. That's four, or shoot, I, I, let me try that. 847-912-1395. And that's the Avian Aqua Clean. Well, thank you again. Thanks for right, uh, being on our show. Bye-bye now. Talk to you soon. Hi, thank you for joining us for Pet Tech, where we explore the science behind new products and services that make caring for your pet easier, safer, and more fun. Remember, you can reach me, your host, Ken Jones, at PetTech at PetLifeRadio.com. I hope you will always tell your friends and family about the Pet Tech Show, and I appreciate it. I want to share Pet Tech with more pet enthusiasts, and I need your help for that. So I have a new contest for you this week. To enter the drawing for a free CD of soothing stories and music for the solo dog, simply email me at pettech at petliferadio.com and put CD Dog Stories in the subject line. This drawing closes March 30th, 2012. And if you're moved to do so, I would appreciate a few words from you about the show. If you like what we're doing here at Pet Tech, I ask you to leave a little testimonial at our iTunes page. I invite the garden and pond lovers among you to check out my other podcast called Prince of Ponds, where we discuss ponds, waterfalls, fountains, and all sorts of ornamental water features. You can hear it at princeofponds.com, on iTunes, and at the great petliferadio.com. Till next time, you remember now to give your pets some love today. <laughs>